Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to look at the three major theories which are associated with the asset base concept. So let us start. There are three theories which explains us how do we define assets and how do we define bases. Okay, the first one is known as the Arrhenius concept or Arrhenius theory. Second one is Bronsted Lorry's theory or Bronsted Lorry concept. And the third one is Lewis theory. Okay, we will start with the first one, Arrhenius concept. So each of these theories, they put forward a definition, like a definition in order to understand what are assets and a definition in order to understand what are bases. Okay, let us start with the first concept, which is known as RNS concept. Okay, RNS concept with respect to an asset says that an asset, when you dissolve an asset in an aqueous medium, an acid will dissociate giving us H plus ions. Okay, so over here, one important condition is that the dissociation is studied in aqueous medium. The dissociation, whether you're talking about an acid or you're talking about a base, it has to occur in the aqueous medium, okay? In aqueous medium, an acid will release or dissociate, okay, H plus ions, okay? H plus ions, which are nothing but your protons. So this is the definition of an acid according to the RNS theory, okay? Usually when we talk about aqueous medium, the solvent which we are using is water, okay? So that means that if I have an acid and I dissolve an acid in water, okay, that particular acid will dissociate in such a way that it will increase the overall concentration of H plus ions in my solution, fine? When we consider water as a solvent, H plus ions will exist as H3O plus ions, when water is considered as a solvent, okay, H plus ions, what will happen? They will go and club together with your H2O molecules, fine? I will show you examples as well. So, in the solution, we will have H3O plus ions, which are known as hydronium ions, okay? That is, when the proton is released in water, okay, H plus will associate with water in order to give you H3O plus. Fine. So this is what will happen in the case of an acid. Let us take a very simple example over here. Example, HF, hydrofluoric acid. Okay, HF, when it dissociates, okay, when HF dissociates in water, it will split into H plus, plus air, minus, right? So it is releasing a proton over here, okay? I can show the same reaction in presence of water. So HF plus H2, right? This is how the dissociation will take place. What will I get? HF is going to split into F minus and H plus. That H plus, as I've shown you over here, will go and associate with water. So I will get H3O plus plus F minus, okay? So this is my hydronium ion in the case of uh, your aqueous medium, okay? So this is the definition of an acid according to RNS concept, fine? You can have many more examples uh, like HCl, Okay, you can have nitric acid, HNO3, this is hydrochloric acid. You can also have sulfuric acid. All of these, when you add them in water, they will dissociate releasing H plus uh, protons or even you can call them as hydronium ions. I hope that is clear. Now let us proceed to the RNS concept, uh, the definition of a base. So the definition of a base according to the RNS concept, again, the condition remains the same in an aqueous medium, okay? So RNS said that if you have a base and you dissolve it in water, uh, what will happen? A base will release OH minus ions, okay? OH minus ions are your hydroxide ions, fine? So a base, when it is uh, dissolved in water, it will dissociate in such a way that it will increase the overall concentration of hydroxide ions, fine? Over here, simple example, I can take NaOH, sodium hydroxide. When you add it in water, it will split into Na plus plus OH minus, okay? This is your hydroxide ion, fine? So simple definition of acid and base was given by Arrhenius, but the only condition over here that we have to put is that these dissociations are supposed to take place in the aqueous medium, okay? Some more examples I can take is potassium hydroxide. This acts as a base. Then I can also uh, put down the example of calcium hydroxide, okay? So this uh, concludes the Arrhenius concept. Now let us move forward to the Bronsted-Lorry's, uh, sorry, Bronsted-Lorry's concept.
So the Bronsted-Lawry theory says that an acid is going to be a proton donor and a base is going to be a proton acceptor. Okay, so let us put the definition over here. An acid is said to be proton donor. Okay, and base is said to be proton acceptor. Fine. These were the definitions which were put forward by Bronsted Lorry. Okay. We will take a simple example with respect to an acid. Okay. So suppose I have an acid HCl. Okay. Plus water. Okay. HCl plus water. What will happen is that since HCl over here. Okay. This particular species is going to act as an acid. Right. So HCl will donate its proton. This particular proton will be accepted by water, right? So what will I get from HCl after donating a proton? Cl minus will remain plus this proton is donated to water which will form H3O plus, okay? Over here, our HCl is splitting into H plus and Cl minus, right? This H plus will be picked up by H2O giving us hydronium ion and our chloride anion, right? So this is the reaction that will take place. Okay, so over here, there is an important concept of identifying something which is known as conjugate acid and conjugate base. Okay, and many a times students are confused uh, in order to identify which is a conjugate acid, which is a conjugate base. I will show you a very easy and simple method to apply. Okay, first of all, when you have such reactions, assign your acid and base. Okay, check who has donated proton and check who has accepted that proton. Okay, so over here, HCl has donated. So this is going to act. So this is acting as the acid, right? And water has as accepted you can see over here so this is acting as the base right now you have to look for the same formula species okay look for the same formula species meaning HCl is getting converted into what is HCl getting converted into Cl minus or is HCl getting converted into H3O plus hmm? this is what you have to identify so over here HCl is getting converted into Cl minus correct from HCl you're getting Cl minus and from H2O you are getting H3O plus. Check for the formula, right? Check for the formula, okay? So basically what is happening over here, HCl is getting converted into Cl minus. So it is losing H plus, right? If it is losing H plus, that means this particular form, that is Cl minus becomes your conjugate base, okay? Fine, this particular form becomes your conjugate base. You can also represent it as Cb. Fine. So over here, if you have an acid, okay, whatever remains from that formula or whatever changes are taking place on that formula, that will become opposite. Okay. So if this is an acid, this will become a conjugate base. Okay. Come to water. Water is acting as a base from H2O, you are getting H3O plus, right? If this is a base, what will this become? This will become your conjugate acid. As simple as that. Okay. Assign acid base first. Then check for the change in formula, okay? Either there will be loss of proton or there will be gain of proton, okay? Accordingly, assign the opposite to the species which are present on your right-hand side, fine? So here also the simple method is basically when HCl is losing H+, plus, it is forming conjugate base, okay? When H2O is gaining H+, plus, okay? What is happening over here? Gaining H+. Plus. H2O is gaining H+, plus, it is forming a conjugate acid. Okay, so that is the simple uh, definition that you have to keep in mind and just check for the change in formula accordingly assign the opposite. Fine, we will take a few more examples. So this is a very simple way of understanding what will act as a conjugate acid and what will act as a conjugate base. Okay, suppose you have your starting species HA. Okay, suppose you have your, your starting species is HA. If at all you are adding a proton to HA, okay, it will form H2 a plus okay why plus because you are adding a positive right this was overall neutral now you are adding a proton to it so obviously you get a plus charge okay if you are adding a proton the species which is formed is known as conjugate acid that's all you have to remember okay if you are removing a proton okay so h a if i'm removing h plus i will be left with a minus because i'm removing a proton so negative charge will increase okay the species which is formed is known as conjugate base simple just remember this, if you are adding a proton, you will get a conjugate acid. If you are removing a proton, you will get a conjugate base, okay? We will apply this trick on ammonia, NH3, okay? We will just apply it on this, fine? So see, now we will try to identify what is a conjugate acid of ammonia and what is a conjugate base, okay? So suppose I am adding H plus, plus H plus, okay? If I am adding H plus, what will I get? NH4 plus, 
right? If I'm adding H plus, this is called as the conjugate acid of ammonia. Okay. Now let us remove H plus. Okay. If I'm removing H plus, what will I get? NH2 minus. Okay. NH2 minus because I've removed a proton. NH2 minus will be conjugate base of ammonia. Another example we can take HCO3 minus. What is this? Bicarbonate. Bicarbonate ion. Okay. Bicarbonate ion. If at all I am adding H plus. So this will become H2CO3. Okay. Because it already had a negative sign. I am adding a proton. Plus and minus will cancel out. Overall will be neutral. If I am adding a, a proton over here. This will become conjugate acid. Okay. If I remove. This will become CO3 minus 2. Okay, why minus 2? Because it was already minus. I removed a plus charge from it. So, obviously negative charge will increase. Okay, this will become your conjugate base. So, I hope now it's very clear how to identify conjugate acid and how to identify conjugate base in any given reaction. Now, let us take an example of ammonia with water. Okay, NH3 plus water will give us NH4 plus 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 OH minus. Okay, so NH3 over here is accepting a proton. So that means NH3 is acting as a base. Water is donating a proton. So water will act as an acid. Okay, now let us try to identify conjugate acid and conjugate base. Okay, first of all check the formula change. NH3 is getting converted into NH4 plus. H2O is getting converted into OH minus. Okay, so if NH3 is a base, this will become opposite. So this is a conjugate acid. I've already shown you how. Okay, that is because it is gaining a proton. Uh, water was acid, hydroxide over here will become conjugate base because it is losing its proton, fine. So over here, NH3 is acting as a proton acceptor, so it is a base. Water is acting as a proton donor, so it becomes an acid, okay. Another thing previously, the example which I had shown you with HCl, where I had H2, yeah, HCl plus H2O, uh, we got Cl minus plus H3O plus, correct. Uh, HCl was the acid, water was the base. Hmm? And Cl minus was forming from the acid, so this was becoming your conjugate base. H3O plus was becoming your conjugate acid, right? So there is a thing that you can notice in both the reactions. Water over here is acting as an acid, water over here is acting as a base. Okay, so substances which can act as both acid and base. In some reactions, they act as an acid, in some reactions, they act as a base, are known as amphoteric species. Amphoteric species okay so water is an example of amphoteric uh, species which depending on uh, its uh, like the reaction conditions it can either act as an acid or it can act as a base okay so that is all with respect to Bronsted lorry let us move towards Lewis theory last theory is Lewis theory according to Lewis theory the definition of an acid was given as an acid is is an electron pair acceptor Okay, any species which can accept a pair of electron. Okay, and base can be defined as an electron, sorry, one second, an electron pair donor. Any species which can donate a pair of electrons. Okay, over here, patent example is usually a BF3 plus NH3. Okay, so we know that in NH3, nitrogen possesses a lone pair of electron which it can donate to boron because boron over here does not have a complete uh, uh, octate. Okay, over here, BF3, if I just want to draw the structure, this is how BF3 looks. Okay, so there are only six electrons in its outermost shell uh, in order to be stable or in order to have a complete octate, you require eight. Okay, so it can easily take two electrons from nitrogen. Fine, the product that we get over here is somewhat represented this way. Okay, wherein we show, we show the transfer of electrons from nitrogen to boron. Okay, so actually boron over here develops like a negative charge and nitrogen develops a positive charge. But overall, the species is neutral because plus and minus are going to cancel out each other. Fine. Right? So this is an example wherein we can easily explain the Lewis theory definition of acids and bases. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. In case this video was helpful, then please give this video a thumbs up because that will motivate me in order to make more content for you all. And also subscribe to S Chemistry for more such videos. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.